Power supplies have really changed over the years and now more and more of them are becoming switch mode power supplies that will take in the power line convert it down to a lower voltage. Here's a switching supply here that uh, outputs 5 and 12 volts similar to what's in your computers here. Here's another one out of a piece of equipment not sure what it was, I salvaged it it still works, it has an output connector here but anyway, the <clears throat> problem with these is if you look at how they're designed the power line plugs in here and you see this line here this is the isolation line from here over this is reference to the power line from here over this is isolated from the power line except for you got an optocoupler here feedback and also a cap here across but basically taking measurements on this side is perfectly fine this side you have to be really careful because you have a ground reference to the power line and if you don't do this right um, you gotta remember who's out to get you that's right ready kilowatt so how do you measure now on this side also here if you look here's the power side here's the isolation line side here and the isolated output side here and basically the way these work they take the power line they go through some filtering uh, common mode choke it's rectified that is is um, goes through a, a large capacitor here which will charge up to the peak of the power line which is about 170 some volts and then generally what they do is they'll switch a large device either a MOSFET or a transistor that will switch that voltage through a transformer at a high frequency and this can be upwards of 20 kilohertz or higher up to even half a megahertz and then the output of that is uh, rectified filtered and that's your output and of course since it's done at such high frequencies the magnetics are pretty small so anyway what we need to be able to do is since a lot of times the problems are on the primary side here or the on non isolated side we have to be able to take measurements something I've seen people do and a lot of guys used to do it in the olden days was they would float the scope they would remove the ground lead where it plugs in the wall which is pretty dangerous thing to do because um, basically um, if you connect your ground lead up to the line instead of the neutral you're basically the frame of the scope is going to be um, at line potential it's a electro le electrocution hazard so that's a no-no although I've seen them do it in the past Another thing uh, that works is if you uh, use two probes, of course you need a two channel scope to do it, and you go into the add mode, and then this will add channel one and two. And then if you invert channel two and set both channels to equal deflection factors, you'll measure the difference or basically subtract both channels. And then you can measure two points without uh, the ground reference. Of course you want to make, like I say, you want to make sure you take the ground clips off of the probes to do that. So that's another option. Another thing you should really do is use an isolation transformer. Another thing I've done in the past, picked up one of these. This is a small battery powered oscilloscope. completely isolated from the line. The only thing you have to be careful is the barrel of this BNC depending on where you're connecting your your ground lead this could be a danger. This this accepts a regular scope probe but anyway this is completely isolated it runs on lithium batteries. So that's another option you can use. Now there's another option now especially now that the prices have come down and that is to use a differential probe.
here's one I just picked up. I've wanted one of these for a long time, but uh, if you look at Tektronix differential probes, um, you'll know why I don't have one. They're about two grand. This was a little over $100. Well worth it. And it's really, in my opinion, the only safe way to work on these new, new supplies. Anyway, you've got your two outputs here, and these are isolated through many, many megums of resistance. So I can go in with these probes and I can actually probe the line side of these switch mode power supplies. In fact you can connect these right across the power line and um, really have no problem. Another nice thing about these probes is they have replaceable tips on them. You can connect grabbers like this. You can connect a regular test lead here where you can go in and probe in your circuit. Here's something you wouldn't want to do with a regular oscilloscope. I've got the two probes connected directly across the power line. No isolation transformer directly connected across the line. And if you look at the display here, Chris, one thing you have to do is make sure that your probe is set to the type of probe you're using. Now, I'm on the uh, times 500 on the differential probe, so I have to set my probe to 500. So now I'm reading 122 volts RMS, 59.9 cycles, peak to peak is 350 volts, 350 volts peak to peak. So that's one of the nice things about um, these probes. I love my new Siglent scope, but you know what? Nothing beats an old Tektronix. <laughs> here I'm looking at the, uh, the gate of the power MOSFET here, and I have a 20 ohm load on the power supply. And if you look carefully, all right, I'm going to go to 15 ohms, and then 10 ohms, and then 5 ohms. And if you look carefully, you can see the duty cycle is changing as I vary the load. So this, this, apply, this supply is working. This is the other supply, and um, using the differential probe I'm measuring between the negative and <clears throat> the terminal on the transformer that's being driven by the uh, FET. And if you look at here at the scope, okay, I'm going to add a load. I'm rolling the response right now, but notice the change. Now I've let up. Now I connect the load. Now I've released the load. This is a 20 ohm load. And you'll notice that, okay, this is open circuit. You'll notice how the duty cycle of this signal is changing with the varying load conditions. So this, this power supply is actually working. This one came out of a device. I can't remember what it was. I always pull these out. Um, this was a working one and so was the other one. Anyway, um, if you're going to work on these power supplies, you might want to consider getting a differential probe. It's a lot safer way to do it. And uh, not, for, not only for you, but for your oscilloscope, because you can blow a scope up if you're not careful. Anyway, uh, that was just a quick one. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.